Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday. I really won't have too much of a video today. Real short one because uh, we just had a wicked storm pass through here. You can probably see the street, all the leaves in the street behind me and whatnot. But it came through here like a gangbusters and uh, knocked down a lot of branches, leaves. I'm just finishing cleaning up now. And uh, so, but we do have something I wanted to show you that I uh, think you might be interested in. Let's go downstairs and Whenever check it out. there's a uh, threat of a storm or rain, I always fly what I call my storm flag. And that flag is an older flag, but it, uh, you know, I'm not going to fly my really good flag because they take a beating when there's uh, heavy storm weather or something. But this one, this storm was pretty quick and fast and it actually bent the rod that held the uh, storm flag. So I had to cut off six inches and put it back in. So uh, being frugal. Okay, uh, today, I, like I said, I, I wanted to talk about something different. I had an, uh, a great uncle, my grandmother's uncle. Uh, was that great uncle? Anyway, he's, his name was Harry, and that guy was so interesting. Every time this guy came over, he had stories about everything. You would sit down at the table, and he could look at anything, butter, and he could tell you the history of butter. The guy was interesting. And that's why I used to tell my scouts, I said, you know, there's a lot of things you can be in life, but probably the best thing you could be is interesting because this guy could go anywhere and people just swarmed around him because he, he was just an interesting guy. So um, I, I want to talk about uh, stories, you know, I would, today we're, it's a tribute to my Uncle Harry and I just want to, this is something that he would talk about. Um, uh, we're going to talk about an orange juice, believe it or not. Uh, you know, orange juice, fresh squeezed orange juice was something years ago that was on everybody's table, you know? Uh, it was big in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and I don't know what happened. Then all of a sudden the uh, orange juice in containers and then frozen orange juice in the 60s became popular in the 70s and then tang and whatnot, but... I guess the old days, you know, people appreciated fresh squeezed orange juice if you've never had it before, which a lot of youngsters haven't. It's a it's a real treat and it's uh, delicious. Totally different than that stuff that comes in cardboard or glass containers. There's nothing that you get that uh, can compare to fresh squeezed anything. So even lemonade, you know, when you go to the, the the state fairs, we always stop and get a lemonade. It's fresh squeezed right there and it's delicious. But uh, let me show you a, a couple of uh, let me show you one actually of my my mother's orange juice squeezer and it's uh, i think you'll find it no, pretty during interesting the 40, probably during the peak of orange juicing there were so many different type of glass juicers and things like that and they were all different and they all were beautiful some were the depression glass some were the uh, uh the press glass they were just and the people actually collect these uh you also had hand juicers you had all different types people would actually just juice by cutting it in half and squeezing it with their hand but uh, in the uh, 50s, that's when they came out with the really nice juicers. Let me show you one. Now what you're looking at here is my mom's uh, juicer mat. You know, she had this. Uh, I guess she probably got it as a wedding gift or something. But this is a uh, uh, was an orange and grapefruit juicer. And uh, just look at how this thing is made. This is like when Art Deco, past Art Deco, like in the 50s, when this is just, look at that. What a beautiful, whoever designed this was really uh took extra time to do such a nice job. Let me show you how it works. It's just a handle here and the handle lifts up and you can see it's, a, it's got a gear and then when it reaches this point, it tilts back the head, okay? Uh, and then under here, you have three pieces. That's all there is to it. Uh, the first piece is your uh, cast. This is a cast aluminum. And uh, this is where you would place your grapefruit or orange on here. And it has little strainers for the pits. And on the bottom here is the container that will hold the juice. Now, um, you can see there's a little register here with this square. Just not so nicely done. It works almost like an arbor press, the, the gear. And on the bottom here, you can see it has the cup that also will grip it. And on the bottom here, you could see here what it says. It says, sure. it says Till Top Juice O Mat, and it gives you the patent numbers. It was made by the rival manufacturing company out of Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, again, like I said, these weren't cheap when they were made because they were, you know, it was quite a bit of casting. You could see how it works in here, and, and it just works phenomenally. So let's try it out. I bought some oranges just to show you how this works. It's been quite a while since I had some fresh squeezed oranges. Let's now, I to went to uh, ShopRite today to pick up some oranges. Believe it or not, I couldn't find any Florida oranges. You don't use the navel, uh, the navel or the easy peeling type oranges when you're trying to make juice because uh, the, usually the ones that have the pits and things like that are usually have more juice and uh, and also they're a little bit sweeter. But you go by the weight of the orange and these are thin skinned. They're not good really for eating out of the bag like this, but they're much better for juicing. These are a product of South Africa. 
And um, it's amazing to, you know, it's got to come all the way up. Florida is uh, the number two producer of uh, of these oranges. Actually, the number one producer is now, Brazil. All fruit that's sold in the United States is supposed to be marked with the country of origin. And you can see here, this one is a, a South African orange. And uh, first thing I always do, and this is something my uncle, my uncle would never buy fruit from outside the United States. And But... Uh, First thing you do is you wash them. Anytime you, you get a, a foreign fruit, you know, wash it with uh, warm water and uh, scrub it or whatever. Because they do sometimes are sprayed, you know, to prevent fungus and whatever, especially for the, the long travel. So now that we have that, we're going to cut these in half and put them into a, uh, a dish. And I want to show you this dish. Again, talking about Uncle Harriet's stories. These dishes came from, there was an old movie theater up the street from where I live, and uh, this movie theater was there, and during the 50s, they used to give out one dish every time you attended a movie, and uh, every week, it would be a different dish. There was a soup dish, there was a ladle, things like that, and they all had this design. Again, it's a typical 50s design, and my mother had the whole set, and I'm down to only a few left, because over the years, they get broken and whatnot, but you can see here, they were inexpensive... Uh, and dishes, but I, I always think about that whenever I use this. So let's cut up these oranges. Let's get juicing. You know, as a kid, I remember my mother would let me do the juicing, but here we take the orange, place it on top here, and just pull this down. And using, again, this works like an arbor press. There's a gear in there that will drive it down and give you a, a good amount of pressure. You know, that when you squeeze this down, and and get it all the way uh, down you could see that you get most of the juice out of that orange uh, and you can see you lift it up here like this and you can see what it does it, it really does juice and get most of it out you don't you can uh, twist it again and tr try a second press but just like with olive oil the first press is always the best so the second press you start pulling out of the rind and it might be a little bitter so one press is all you want to do Okay, here we have three oranges pressed out, and here is what you get from the yield of three oranges with the juice mat You can see here, it's got a little pouring spout here on the end, and that's the juice that you get. Now I'm going to use a uh, Circa 1950s glass that I, uh, this I'm down to my last one. There was a set of four of these, 1950s, and we're going to pour a little bit in here, and you probably would get... Uh, about a glass and a half, you know, of this, of the juice from, from those oranges. Let me taste them, tell you what it tastes like. I got to tell you, this brings me back because there's nothing in the world like fresh squeezed orange juice. And if you haven't had it and you, and you know, it's been a while, go out. Even if you have to use one of the glass squeeze or whatever, they work just as well. Get yourself some fresh squeezed orange juice, some maybe pancakes or waffles, Really enjoy yourself. That's the good, that, you know, it's the, things like that that are most enjoyable in life. And we skip over it because we're in a rush and, uh, you know, we do things quick. But that frozen or, or uh, jarred or any kind of orange juice always has that bitter taste. And I, I always like fresh squeeze. So that's, uh, that's what we have for today. Something uh, a little bit different. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for tuning in. Take care now. Bye-bye.